This doesn't look like much. A stripped down car alternator, a few magnets, some epoxy resin, but give it time and it will hum with quiet power. Welcome to the heart of Liberty Engine 4.0, a machine born not in a factory, but in a workshop where curiosity never sleeps. No fuel tank, no battery, no wires feeding it life from a distant grid. This thing spins, lights up, and powers tools seemingly out of thin air. Is it magic? No, it's engineering, the kind that makes you question everything you thought you knew about electricity. Let's open it up. The alternator, deconstructed. We begin with something familiar, a truck alternator. Designed to charge car batteries, it's never meant to run independently. But that's exactly what we're about to make it do. First, we remove all the parts that limit its potential. Out go the carbon brushes. Gone is the voltage regulator. The rectifier? Useless for what we're building. Even the pulley comes off, leaving us with the raw frame of the alternator. Next, we dismantle the rotor. Inside, there's copper winding and a collector ring. These two are removed. We're not interested in keeping what's conventional. We're here to rebuild it purposefully. Every unnecessary component is stripped until only the bare rotor remains. Then comes the cutting. With a grinder, precise marks are made on the rotor. Steel gives way to sparks as the rotor's structure is reshaped. Once essential to the alternator's original function, the copper coils are no longer needed. They're carefully unwound and removed. What's left is a skeletal shell waiting for a new identity. This is more than just disassembly, it's transformation. Each piece removed is a step toward a different kind of power. A cleaner, quieter, self-driven kind. The kind that doesn't play by the old rules. And this is only the beginning. Rebuilding the rotor, magnets, and precision. Now that we've stripped the rotor to its bones, it's time to breathe new life into it. Magnetic life. The original copper windings are replaced by something more deliberate. A ring crafted from a rare alloy, blending silver and aluminium. This alloy isn't just exotic, it's chosen for its unique conductivity and strength. The ring is shaped to fit the rotor perfectly, snug, centered, and intentionally. But this is where the real magic starts. We begin placing magnets. Neodymium is strong and sharp-edged, and each one is carefully oriented. The outward-facing side of each magnet is designated as North. They're lined up in the slots with painstaking precision. Opposite them, South Polarity magnets are inserted, forming a field of opposing forces locked into symmetrical balance. These magnets aren't just stuck on, they're bonded. High-strength adhesive holds them firm, resisting the high-speed rotation and vibration to come. Every placement is double-checked. The goal is equilibrium, perfect alignment. Why so much care? Because even the slightest misplacement would throw the rotor off balance. At thousands of RPMS, imbalance means failure. But here, we're building something reliable, durable, efficient, once complete, the rotor doesn't resemble its original form at all. It's no longer just a car part. It's the core of a new generator, and it's nearly ready to turn. Crafting the core, resin, plastic, and balance. We use unlikely materials to secure the magnets and reshape the rotor into something smoother, a piece of plastic boat and an old CD. The plastic is cut to fit tightly around the rotor, acting as a mold. The CD is trimmed and glued into place, forming a temporary shield that perfectly aligns everything. Now comes the epoxy resin. It's mixed slowly, carefully, and poured into every gap and crevice. The resin seeps around the magnets and fills the slots. There are no air bubbles or movement. A solidified core locks the new components into place. We wait. 24 hours pass. The resin hardens like stone. The next day, the CD and plastic mold are peeled away. What remains is surprisingly sleek. There are no gaps. There are no loose parts. It's a perfectly round and heavy rotor that spins without a wobble. It's compact, dense, and smooth. 
Still, there's more refinement. The cooling fins bent during disassembly are gently adjusted back into shape. We grind away any rough edges and test the spin again. It's perfect, silent, and balanced. This step isn't just cosmetic. It prevents vibration, reduces heat, and allows for a quieter rotation. A stable rotor is a stable generator. And this one? It's ready to become the centerpiece of something far more ambitious than any old alternator. Mounting the machine. Base and brackets. Now that the rotor is rebuilt, it's time to build its new home. The generator won't just float in the air. It needs a solid, vibration-proof foundation. So we begin with a thick wooden board wide enough to support the alternator and the engine. It's more than just a base. It's the stage where the entire system comes to life. We attach four rubber feet underneath the board. These absorb vibration, dampen sound, and keep the setup from skidding across the floor during operation. Next, we fabricate metal brackets for both the alternator and the motor. One will hold the engine in place, the other secures the modified alternator. Precision matters here. The alignment has to be perfect. Even a few millimeters off can cause the belt to slip or wear out early. We drill the holes, tighten the bolts, and double-check everything. Once mounted, the alternator and motor sit like twin pillars, wired, bolted, and braced. The base is stable and the layout is clean. It's not just functional, it looks like it belongs together. It's a quiet machine waiting to wake. Wiring for power, coils, and star connection. With the alternator in place, we move on to its vanes and the wiring. Inside the alternator are three separate coils, each responsible for generating a phase of electricity. First, we strip the ends of the coil wires, clean the contacts, and prepare them for soldering. These wires aren't just randomly connected. They follow a precise configuration called a star connection. We solder one end of each of the three coils together, forming the central point of the star. The remaining three ends, one from each coil, are left open. These will be our power outputs. Each connection is covered with heat shrink tubing to insulate and protect the soldered joints. Then, we bundle and secure the cables with zip ties, keeping everything neat and safe. Loose wires can snag, vibrate, or wear down over time, but this setup will prevent that. Electrical terminals are crimped onto the output ends. These will connect directly to our sockets and distribution box later. The alternator is no longer just mechanical. It's ready to carry current, clean, balanced, three-phase power. From coils to cables, the flow is coming. Motor conversion and first ignition. We need a motor, but not just any motor, to spin the alternator. We chose a compact 0.37 kW three-phase motor that is reliable, efficient, and powerful enough. But there's one catch. We're not running this in a full industrial three-phase environment, so we tweak it. A 20 mEF capacitor is added to the system, converting this motor to run on single-phase 220 V AC. It's a common trick that lets us use household power to run what was originally meant for factory floors. We attach a power cable with a Shuko plug and wire it into the motor. Once everything is connected, it's time to test. The switch is flicked. The motor hums to life. It spins smoothly, without hesitation or stutter. The direction of rotation is exactly as we need it, clockwise and consistent. There is no overheating, no rattling, just a clean, powerful spin. This motor isn't just a driver. Its heartbeat will keep the alternator alive. Together, they form a closed circuit of motion and generation. With this motor and a few modifications, we're one pull away from real, usable, off-grid electricity. Pulley system and manual starter. We install a precisely aligned pulley system to transfer motion from the motor to the alternator. Both shafts receive identical pulleys, locked securely into place. Alignment is key. If they're slightly off, the belt could slip or wear out quickly. Once set, we loop the transmission belt over the pulleys. It fits with perfect tension, tight enough to grip but loose enough to run smoothly. But we've added one more touch, a manual starter. If we want to operate it without the motor, a pull start mechanism is installed. Custom parts fit onto the rotor shaft. 
One acts as a catch, the other turns it. It spins effortlessly after a few test pulls, and no electricity is needed. This isn't just a backup, it's a statement. The Liberty Engine 4.0 doesn't rely on external power. It can start anywhere, anytime, and it's ready. Voltage test and load demo. With everything finally assembled, the re-engineered rotor, the converted motor, the star-connected coils, and the sturdy wooden mount, it's time to awaken the Liberty Engine 4.0. We connect a voltmeter across two of the three output wires. One firm pull on the manual starter cord, and the rotor spins into motion. Instantly, the voltmeter reads 230 volts. Clean, steady, no dips, no spikes. But voltage is just the beginning. We've wired socket outlets on the wooden base, connecting each one across different phase pairs to create a balanced three-phase power system. The layout is clean. Every joint is insulated and every terminal is secured inside a junction box. This isn't slapped together, it's built for real-world use. To prove it, we begin the demo. First, a household lamp. We plug it in and switch it on. A warm, unwavering glow fills the space. Then, we up the challenge, an angle grinder. It powers on without hesitation, drawing full strength from the generator. A final check shows 226 volts across every socket. It is balanced and reliable. What started as a discarded car alternator now powers tools, lights, and imagination. There are no batteries, no tricks, just brilliant engineering. Liberty Engine 4.0 doesn't promise the future, it delivers it.